KB Lake or something. And again, my hair's a mess. Oh well. So there's a couple things I said. I'm just gonna pick up the camera and see what God wants me to say because you know what? You try and make a video every day and you don't have like horses and goats and cows and all you have is some chickens that are doing just fine and some dogs that are also doing just fine and you can run out of things to say on a homestead. You can say, wow, I wish I had chickens, goats, horses, pigs, whatever, and a barn to put them in, but since you don't have those and you lament about what you don't have all the time, people won't watch your videos because that's not what people want to see. So, while we're growing, which we will do, um, I guess I'll show you this. This kind of hit me this morning. We have this, um, I know it's hard to see. We have this uh, thing on our door here, our pass-through door, and it's scripture. The one that I read this morning was, oops, oh, we don't need to do that. Um, we are pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus. So that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. 2 Corinthians 4, 8-10. through 10. And that's kind of a big deal to me because um, we have to go through a bunch of stuff on this earth. We have to go through a bunch of crap. We have to, you know, this isn't supposed to be paradise. Like I said, if the road, if the road was only slower, I would be in paradise. This, if I only had a barn, I'd be in paradise. If I only had you know, a horse that'd be in paradise and I could go ride some more. And if I only had this, well, this isn't supposed to be paradise, people. Garrett, okay? This isn't supposed to be paradise. This is supposed to be training ground for paradise. So expect to be crushed, but not abandoned and not the heck beaten out of you. But I learned the scripture another way. But expect to be a little bit, expect it to be hard. Because it's supposed to be hard. It's not supposed to be easy. There's supposed to be death. There's supposed to be hurts. There's supposed to be hardships. And you know what? There's good too. There is good. It says we will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So there's good too. But this is hard. And it's supposed to be. You know, when guys go to boot camp... <laughs> I already got the eggs for the day. When guys go to boot camp, and I had two sons that went to boot camp and did amazingly, amazingly well. I love you both, my sons. I'm very, very proud of both of you. When guys go to boot camp, they don't go, dang, this is going to be awesome. Well, I'm sure they might do that, but they quickly find out it's not awesome. From what I understand, I've never been to boot camp, but they quickly find out that it is indeed not awesome and that it's hard and that they get yelled at and that they get persecuted and that they get you know hazed and you know both my sons had a hard time in boot camp not that they're not strong kids they are very strong kids they're very capable very well my one son had a very long career did very very well um, went abo abroad several times and by abroad I mean to war zones um, he did very, very, very well. But you know what? He didn't like boot camp. I don't like boot camp either. But this is our boot camp. And we're going to be shaped and molded and the atom beaten out of us so that we can live forever at, in, with Christ. Let's put it this way. I went to nursing school. Oh, gosh. 1989, I graduated. Um, took my boards, became a full-time RN, which I was sure I'd fail. I, I was sure I'd fail. I already had another job lined up because I was positive I'd fail. Not a test taker. And I was positive I'd fail. So I took my boards, 1990, and lo and behold, I passed. My dream job was in labor and delivery. I, when I had my daughter, the one who lives with us, lives with me now, anyway, I didn't want to, uh, looking for a chicken, y'all. A rogue chicken. I didn't want to leave the hospital. I wanted to learn what the nurses did. I wanted to, 
I wanted to help in everybody's delivery. I wanted to, it was crazy. I had a crazy episiotomy, y'all know what that is. Ugh, I was 19 years old and I had mostly no support and I had a baby and I had engorged, uh, engorged breasts and they gave her a bottle of water which I am adamantly opposed to. Do not give these babies that are breastfed bottles of water. I'm adamantly opposed. They gave her water and then she wouldn't nurse and it was just, it was one nightmare scenario after another. But I, I was, I knew I had been bitten and that was the bug that I wanted to have. I had to be around people having babies. I had to. So I happily hit 19 years old, took my son, I was going to be a child psychologist. There would be some messed up kids in this world if I was their psychologist. I took myself off to nursing school at 19 and I worked really hard, a full time job at a daycare center and I took, had got pregnant uh, eight months later and had a baby about, I think they're 19 months apart. My son came along and uh, took myself off to nursing school and became a nurse and got my dream job in labor and delivery. And uh, wow, you know, nursing school was terrible. It was terrible. But I'll tell you what else was terrible. That was the first couple weeks in labor and delivery when I had learned what I was doing. But once I figured out what I was doing, and once I got to the point, which didn't take me too long because I loved my job, once I got to the point where I could do my job without anybody hovering over my shoulder or without, you know, without having to learn it, once I knew it, I, I was I was in my glory. I was, it was great. And for a long, long, long time, being in labor and delivery was, you know, so important to me. My kids were the most important, for sure. But being in labor and delivery and working with moms having babies was just, it was my calling. It was my calling and I loved it. And uh, were those first few weeks paradise? No. I could not find this other chicken. They were not paradise. Was my, uh, was my nursing school experience paradise? Heck no. I, I was miserable. I was miserable. I told my kids, the weeding out process, how bad do you want it? You go through something like this, it's a weeding out process. You have to get through it and get to where you're going. But, um, no, it was hard. I guess that other chicken's in here. I can't find her. Anyway, it was hard. And that's what this is supposed to be. It's not supposed to be easy. It's supposed to be hard. It's our training ground for where we're going to live our eternity with Jesus Christ if we have accepted Him and given Him our heart and our time and our money and our life. And He wants it all, people. He don't want half what you can give Him. He don't want you to have one foot in the world and one foot in, with Him. He wants it all. He wants it all. Give it all to Him. I'll tell you, you never be sorry. You never be sorry you gave it all to Him. I'm not sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm crushed but not destroyed and I'm all those things. But I'm not sorry and I'm not going to get back up. I'm not going to, I'm not going to give up on this life with Christ. I'm not going to do it. But I don't know y'all. That's just kind of what I wanted to say today because what's that got to do with Christmas? Well, not a whole lot, but I'm going to give you something that has to do with Christmas here in just a second. But hey, and there's the point. This is a training ground. This is boot camp. This is nursing school, etc., etc. This isn't the real deal. This isn't home. The Bible says this is not our home. This is not our home. We are not home yet. So while we're in this pre-home place, then uh, pick up your bootstraps, man up, woman up, whatever. And, and let's get through this. Let's help each other through this. Help those people in Tennessee who woke up to nothing. Those people have nothing. Oh my God, pray for them. Send them what you can. Pinball did a thing today about why are we preppers. We're preppers for that reason. Why do I put food away? If I could get food to a decent place in Tennessee that would help them, I would send it. If I could find a decent charity to send some money to, I will send a little bit of money. That's why we do what we do, so that we can help others. 
anyway pray for those people and pray for Danny from Deep South Homestead he lost his brother I'm not sure if it was in the tornadoes or not but he did lose his brother which is extremely sad so pray also for him but um this is a cake and those are cupcakes and this is the box from the cake and the cupcakes and every year for baby Jesus's birthday we make a cake. This is not the cake. It's too soon to be making that, but every year since my kids were teeny tiny, I have made them a cake for baby Jesus' birthday. I think it's a great thing to get into and a great tradition to have with your children, especially so that they know when they wake up Christmas morning that it's not about all about presents and, you know, Santa, whoever that is, and, you know, all these things that are not important. We are celebrating baby Jesus' birthday and we bake him a cake every year. And we will bake him a cake this year. And we will probably video it because I'll be really bad out of ideas by then. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, pray for the people in Tennessee. Pray for Danny's brother or Danny's family. And um, bake baby Jesus' birthday cake, people. Give him a birthday cake. And remember why we celebrate. It's not for us, it's for him. All right, y'all. <laughs>